Hi, and welcome to the Fox Sports Radio, iHeartRadio, iHeartMedia Movie Review. I'm John Ramos with the Doug Gottlieb Show and Steve Gorman Sports here on Fox Sports Radio. And today, we're going to be reviewing Despicable Me 3. Now, this movie opens Friday, June 30th, 2017. It is rated PG, and it brings everybody back again. We get Gru, we get the Minions, we get Lucy, we get his daughters Margo, Edith, and Agnes, and of course we get an antagonist in this movie. His name is Baltazar Brat. This movie is quite interesting because it had a lot of expectations for me going into it. I enjoyed the first two movies. I was looking forward to the Minions movie. I think it fell short. It was a little bit boring, actually. It kind of got a little bit too bogged down, and so I was kind of looking forward to getting back the Minions and Gru, and uh, though that's what happened here. Um, what can I say about this movie? Uh, Gru is now married to his wife, Lucy, who we met in the last movie. Gru, played by Steve Carell, and Lucy, played by Kristen Wiig. They are now together and kind of fighting evil together. Uh, and they are obviously raising the kids of uh, Margot, played by Miranda Cosgrove, and Edith and Agnes. The problem here with the movie is that it never really gets going. It kind of just kind of sits there. I found it to be kind of boring in a way, just like I thought Minions was, which was interesting because I wanted it to keep going and, and do more. There were parts of the movie that were very interesting. Uh, the kids were very interesting. In fact, here was a wonderful scene with uh, the kids in the movie. You saw a for real like unicorn? What did it look like? <gasps> did you get it? Did it smell like candy? Was it fluffy? It was so fluffy. I thought I was going to die. So you see that they're having a good time. Agnes is trying to find a unicorn. So we see that situation going on there. But besides the kids, I mean, it, the movie seemed to be fragmented. It kind of moved here and there. And it wasn't really fluid like I hoped it would be. Um, of course, we get the minions. And the minions in short spurts, I realize, are better than an entire movie of them. At least from the last minions movie. Uh, we get a really funny scene here with the Minions. They are in prison, and they kind of give an homage to uh, the movie West Side Story. Take a look. Hey, get that back! Huh? Run away! Run away! Oh, no! Run! She will still believe in where we're from. So, short spurts of the minions, very good, very funny. Uh, in this movie, Gru finds out that he has a brother, and his brother's name is Drew. So, Steve Carell plays both characters, and this part was interesting. I mean, having them play off each other was, was pretty fun. Um, it didn't have as much depth as I thought it could have with them, but you do get a feel that there's obviously two guys that are going to work together probably in future Despicable Me movies. Uh, this was a very good scene when they first uh, find out... Well, you watch. I wonder what this does. Holy moly! Dad's villain wheels! Maybe split! Hey, you want to take her out for a spin just for some fun? What a beautiful day! Zero to 403 seconds! Able to withstand a nuclear blast! I'm to the D! Good stuff there with Drew and Gru. Funny stuff. I wish there was kind of more of that, but we don't get that till you know halfway through the movie. 
Um, then there's the antagonist, or the quote-unquote bad guy. And the bad guy was played by Trey Parker, who plays the character of Baltazar Bratt, who was this, this loved uh, TV character in the 80s who kind of grew up. He was a kid. He grew up. Nobody wanted him anymore, so he, he kind of became this angry person. I, I really didn't get into this character. I thought it was kind of annoying, really. I mean... He dances, there's a lot of 80s music, which I actually like, but it gets played too much, too often. It's a little bit distracting to me. Well, here's one of the confrontations that they had in the movie. Hello, Gru. How's your transition coming? You know, from world's worst villain to world's worst agent? Oh, that's hilarious. You should be on TV. Ah! Oh, that's right. You are, but then you get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about that? Oh. What? Oh, girls! Well, you can see that Despicable Me 3 has its good points, has its bad points, but for me, there's more bad points as far as the movie than there were good points. I do have to say one thing. This movie probably gifted more toward the children. So, if you have a child that's, you know, about 11 and under, I think this movie will work for them. They'll like the animation, they'll like the, the stuff going on on screen. But in the movie screen that I saw it on, there wasn't a lot, of, a lot of laughs, and for a movie that's supposed to be, I guess, a comedy, I expected more laughs than what I heard and what I actually put out for the movie itself. For me, it was a little boring, kind of just kind of lagged along. It was kind of up and down. It really didn't have a cohesiveness to it. So, if it's my review as far as for adults and for most people, I would say skip it. Wait till it comes out on video. But if your child really wants to go and you want to take him to it, by all means, go for it. Just know that you may be a little bit bored by the movie as it progresses. So I hope uh, that uh, that helped you in your uh, thought patterns of going to see Despicable Me 3. I appreciate your time here on iHeartMedia, iHeartRadio, and Fox Sports Radio. I'm John Ramos, and we'll catch you next time when we go to the movies.